All right, what's up, ladies and gents? I hope you're doing well today. Hope your families are doing well. Today, I want to talk to you about something that I think that will help you out a whole lot. If you pay attention to it, if you process what it is that I'm saying, don't jump to conclusions. Just listen to what I'm saying first. I know a lot of people say that they understand a business. They know how a business operates. But when we really start to look at it, if we look at how often businesses fail, we'll you know, pretty much figure out that people really don't know how businesses operate because they don't have the basic concepts of a business down. They don't understand the basics of a business, right? I heard a man say once that if a person does not understand the purpose of a thing, then misuse and abuse is inevitable, right? You're inevitably going to misuse and abuse yourself as it pertains to a business if you don't understand how a business operates right if you as the ceo of that business does not understand the real purpose the real meaning of a business the concept of a business you are going to misuse and abuse yourself and very frankly your family because your family is depending on you and if you are misusing and abusing yourself you're doing the same thing to your family as well through the operation of this business right the basic concept of a business i believe the basic thing that we have to get drilled into our minds to understand this before we understand anything else that is that a business must earn revenue eventually profits and you are the catalyst you are the person that has to make this business go from zero to where it's earning money and earning money consistently. Everything else is just, you know, it's cool to talk about. Oh, I have my own business. I'm the boss of my business. I make my own decisions. I make my own money. All of that stuff is good, you know, but if you're not consistently making money in a business, continuing to generate dollars over and over and over again, then you, have a big problem on your hand. You are operating a business that either is not making money or you can't find profits in that business. And either way, you got a major problem on your hand. You have a business that's headed toward failure. Now, let's talk about failure in business. How I look at failure is just an opportunity to try something again. Too many of us look at a business and we are so hell bent on staying in business to where we just keep the business open and we're not making any money. We're just paying for the business. And the reason why we're doing that most of the time is because we don't want to admit that this business is a failure. I have failed in this business. Right. And again, failing is, hey, I got a chance to try this thing out again or go at it, go at it in a different way try a different business, right? We hang on to these businesses because we don't want people to say we didn't do something right or we uh, kind of missed the opportunity or we didn't know what we were doing, whatever it might be. We don't want to admit that something went wrong. Sometimes you have to admit that so you can start over. That's okay. There is nothing wrong with being in a business and realizing that the business is not working. And now you, with the entrepreneurial mindset that you have, say, OK, well, now, now it's time for me to try something else, because that's really how we figure out what it is that we want in life. We have to try different things. We have to fail at some things first, and then we'll eventually find that thing, that thing that is going to be what takes you to the next level in life. That thing that you might fall in love with, right? So we really need to look at it and understand that you hear people talk all of this talk about quitting in business. It's not about quitting. You're not quitting. You're realizing that this opportunity that you thought there was so much promise in is not a good opportunity for you. So now you got to change directions so that you can find something that works for you. Because just because it works for me, just because it works for someone else does not mean that it's going to work for you. And if it doesn't work, it is your responsibility to realize that and go in a different direction. Right. Because the whole idea is for you to be successful in business, 
not to be loyal to a business and just stay in that business when you know that it's not working for you. Don't misuse and abuse yourself because you're just hanging on to something because you don't want to admit that it's not working or it's a failure. Admit it so that you can start over. And for those of you who say, hey, Brandon, I'm just not sure if this business is for me yet. I want to spend some more time into it so that I can find out. Do you have any recommendations of a way that I could process this situation? Certainly. What I would say is use what's called the Quink Method. K-W-I-N-K. Here's what that acronym stands for. Knowing what I now know. If you had to make the decision that you made a year ago, you said yes to it as far as this business, starting this business is concerned. If that decision was on the table again, would you say yes after one year, knowing what you now know? After you've spent a year in this business, you know all of that, what you need to know. If you had to make this decision again and go into this business again, could you say yes? And if you don't say yes, if you can't say yes unequivocally to that right away, then it's probably best that at that time you make the decision to cut ties with that business, cut your losses and move forward. Because if you can't unequivocally say that you'll do something a year later, then there's reasons for that, right? Those are some real reasons why you can't jump on it and say yes, especially if you are excited about it, you are something you say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna do this thing. But now this year, you couldn't say the same. That to me is a clear indication that I need to make a different, different move, right? The next thing I want to talk to you about is overhead. For some reason, when we start businesses, even when we have a small amount of capital, when we don't have a lot of resources, for some reason, we choose businesses that have a lot of overhead. For example, a trucking business. A trucking business has a lot of overhead. When you look at buying the truck and all of the stuff that comes with the truck, everybody knows that in trucking, insurance, maintenance of the truck, fuel, all of the costs that are involved in the truck, there's a lot of cost. So that means that you have to make quite a bit of money before you even break even. To me, a first business should not be a business that requires you to spend a whole lot of money, requires you to have a whole lot of capital unless you have a whole lot of capital, right? But even if you do have a whole lot of capital, to me, that first business should be a business that is a minimal investment. Now, why do you say that? Well, very simple, because most businesses will fail. Most times on your first try in business, it's not gonna be the business that you eventually um, start running or you run full time. It's not gonna be that business. so. It's likely that that first one is not going to make it. So you don't want to pin a whole lot of money into it. You want to learn, gain some experiences from it so that you can take into your next next venture. Right. But I would say avoid businesses that have a lot of overhead because they work against the concept of a business. Remember, we talked about it and we said the number one concept of a business is to make revenue. A business has to make revenue eventually profits for you as the business owner to win. So automatically we know if we're spending money out using our resources to maintain and operate the business, then we know that that is a business that goes against our first concept of being in a business that earns revenue, right? So don't choose a business that's going to take a whole lot of capital up front, especially when you don't have it available if you especially if you have to go and borrow it because then when we borrow we start out in the hole so business the number one concept is to earn revenue and then next we want to earn profit but most importantly we have to also look at the fact that there's overhead that comes with that so we want a, a business that has minimal overhead that gives us a chance to make the most profit that's what I wanted to share with you guys, you ladies today. When you're taking a look at a business, do your research on the business. See yourself doing that business. Once you've gotten in and you've started to do it, then, hey, look at it and say, hey, how long can I do this? Is this something that I want to do for a long period of time? Now, if it's not something that you can see yourself doing for an extended period of time, now it's, start, it's time to start looking for the next thing. 
What am I going to do next? Right? One of the worst things that I think people do is they start one business, they fail in that business and they never start again because they're scarred so bad about that first business, right? Things didn't go well, you may have lost money. That's again why we shouldn't put a whole lot of money up front because you probably will lose money. So the smarter the loss, the better. The uh, better you're gonna be able to recover from that. So think about it. Think about what you wanna do. Once you figure that out, put your head down and go to work. And don't be so loyal to the business that you can't see the writing on the wall and change direction when necessary. Be intentional about making revenue. Make that the most important part of your business when you get started. I know that might sound um, a little bit harsh for some of you when we start talking about money. For some reason, people are reluctant to talk about money. You know, they don't really like to talk about the money aspect of a business, but get comfortable talking about that. Be get comfortable being intentional about going after money because money Earning money, earning profits is the real reason. That's the purpose of a business. That's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you want to learn more about the free brokerage business, the business that I do, I'll leave you a free link in the description. It's my five video series. It's titled How the Load Movement Process Works. It'll give you a chance to come into the office with me and you can watch as I move loads, talk to shippers and carriers to give you a better understanding of how this business works. And yes, this is a business with minimal overhead and a lot of room, a lot of potential for you to make profit. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. See you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.